Well, like David said, my name is Jessica Brown. I'm the Director of Marketing for Family Savings Credit Union. Um, I was laughing a little earlier ago because um, some people think I work for the Chamber and I do not. <laughs> um, I've just been a longtime volunteer with the Chamber. Um, I've served on several committees and so um, I'm, I love the Chamber. I love what they do. I'm pretty passionate about it and so it's really kind of an honor to come and talk to you guys about um, something Another thing that I'm passionate about, which is branding. Um, small disclaimer, but, um, because I work in marketing, we're always talking about the fine print. Um, I do not consider myself an expert on branding or a guru or a know-it-all. Um, it's just something that I'm kind of passionate about. Um, and so I just enjoy talking about it with smaller businesses because I think a lot of times smaller businesses um, think that because they're small, they're just local, they don't have to think about branding. Um, and it's simply not um, the case. Um, so whether you are a small um, family-owned business with one or two employees or you're a large business and you have hundreds of employees, branding is, should be number one for all of us. Um, so. Real quick um, about Family Savings Credit Union because um, I would get fired if I didn't talk about Family Savings real quick. Um, we are a, a credit union here in Gadsden. Um, we were formed here back in 1951, um, but we also have branches um, in Georgia as well as um, North Alabama. So um, we have over 70,000 members, we have 11 branches, and we have a little over $700 million in assets. So um, that's a, a quick little um, my spiel about Family Savings Credit Union. So um, I'm pretty passionate about branding, like I, I, I talked, like I said, um, and how just because you're not Google or Apple, um, branding should be just as important to you as it is to the Coca-Colas of the world and the Googles of the world. Um, so, um, real quick, let's just, little scenario. Why, why is branding so important? Let's say that you're at um, Bargain Bin and you find some AirPods, uh, AirPod 2s, that are on sale for $80, which is a pretty good price because brand new, like in Walmart, I think they're like $120, $130, so you're saving a good bit. But you notice that the Apple logo is flipped backwards. Would you buy them? Yes. You would? <laughs> <laughs> Who would buy some Apple uh, um, AirPods for $80 if the logo was wrong? Okay, we have one brave soul. Why would you not? Because they're fake. You think they're fake? The logo, if it's if it is branded properly, Apple is not going to make the mistake of branding something backwards. It's not like a coin that's a misprint from the U.S. government. It is that they're going to make sure everything is branded correctly, and if it's not, they're throwing it away. So if Apple is willing to take that much time and effort to make sure that every single logo is perfect, why aren't y'all? Why aren't small businesses? Shouldn't your customers get the same standard? Um, I probably would not buy AirPods um, with the wrong logo either. <laughs> um, I would get a little nervous. So I, why is this not working? Check the screen, try that. There we go. Okay, so I love games. So let's play a little game. Um, which logo is correct? B. 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 All right, who said B? All right, I heard you. All right. Will, can you be my, my Vanna and ha pass out candy? <laughs> <laughs> you look just like her. <laughs> this is a low budget, no budget game show. <laughs> we couldn't afford Vanna. Okay, Amazon, which is correct, A or B? A. a. Ooh, Good job. Just we have plenty of candy. Everyone gets a piece of candy. <laughs> All right, who can tell me what's wrong with this logo? The colors. Colors are wrong. What else? Two. The O's are too small. Anything else? Does Google put an exclamation point after their logo? 
Is that the correct font? See, you guys know, even by just the font, you don't know what that font's called, but you know it's not right. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> what do you think Pepsi would do if they saw this? Um, yeah, that's the Coca-Cola logo. Are you about candy, Will? Sort of. He just gave everybody some candy, so it's all good, right, except for me. What about McDonald's? Wrong color. Wrong color. Wrong color. No, we are in October. It is on, yes, you're correct, but still, it's the Golden Arches. Disney works. Disney. Walt Disney. Disney. The Nike swatch, but it's like a check mark instead of a swoosh. So the swoosh is too high, right? See, you guys even know just if it's, if it's, Angled wrong, right? All right. What logo is this? It's correct. It's just missing the the main name. Alpha. 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 Now think about it. Alpha is not a nationwide company. It's just in Alabama, right? But you guys know exactly what company I was talking about, even though I took out the company name. What about this one? Trey Ragazzi. Anyone who's in Gadsden has probably eaten, eating, has eaten at Trey Ragazzi. And so we know those three guys, those three silhouettes, those are her sons. Um, and so we, we know that logo, even though they only have three branches or three restaurants. Um, but anyone local knows exactly what that restaurant is. So even though they're not a national restaurant, their logo is important, right? Yes. What's wrong with this one, Will? <laughs> it is never supposed to be tilted on that. It's not tilted. It's also slightly um, splayed. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, I stretched it out. I slanted it. What about this logo? Color. The color's wrong. What else? Roger, what's missing? I do it all the time. I'm not, I, you can actually use it. Triangle. Very good. Give her two candy bars. <laughs> Take Roger's candy away. <laughs> the house isn't there. Exactly. You're missing the roof. We're, um, our logo, like, we are so particular about it. Like, the, the triangle actually um, has a small overhang. It's not flushed with the letters. It's actually, there's like a, an overhang, just like at your house, you know, there's an overhang on your roof. So, so I'm pretty protective of our logo. So let's talk about the importance of branding. Um, and I'm gonna go through all of these one by one. All right, so um, branding um, is more than just a memorable logo, right? When you think of branding, what do you think of? Company image, ethics. Mm -hmm. Company image. You think of taglines. You think of employees. Can an employee be a brand? Stability. Stability. Um, and so good branding, why it's so important is um, it also incre it increases the value of your company. Um, so when I have small companies that say, well, I just really can't afford to brand or afford to do this. Really, truly, really, you can't afford not to. Not to. Um, and so, um, so branding is truly, it's everything. It's your whole company. Um, a brand represents the people's perception of your company, your customer service, your reputation. It's advertising. It's the logo. Um, it's the employees. Um, let's be real. How many of you look at um, Edouard mugshots? It is my morning routine. Um, how many of you see somebody wearing their company shirt in a mugshot and you're like, ooh, that's bad. That's really bad. Um, so it's, it's a little important on who you're hiring, right? You're, you're hiring people that are representing your company. They're part of your brand. 
Um, when all of those things work well together, then that's when you have a healthy brand. So let's talk about when branding improves recognition. Um, I mentioned that a brand is more than just a name, it's more than a logo design, it's more than just a, a catchy tagline. It's really and truly everything that encompasses your organization. So for example, um, branding can be achieved through your visual identity, um, which can be your logo, it can be your website, your colors. Um, we, are, we have very specific colors at the credit union that we use. We're not just cobalt blue. We have a very specific Pantone color number that we use. And you better believe that the marketing department knows if that blue is wrong. <laughs> um, we have a specific red that we use. It's not just cherry red. Um, do you think McDonald's is pretty particular about their gold color? Sure. Yeah. So um, branding can also be achieved through advertising, communication, product, packaging design. Um, it's even the in-store experience. How many of y'all have heard of the member experience or the customer service experience? So, um, and we'll talk about this um, later, but who do you think has probably one of the best customer service experience? What company? Chick-fil-A. Chick 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 Why do you think we're uh, eating Chick-fil-A today? Um, it's about pricing um, and then also sponsoring and partnerships. So part of our brand um, and something that we're really, really proud of is we are big into financial literacy in the school systems. We spend a lot of money um, working with children to make sure that they make wise financial decisions way outside um, after they graduate. Why do you think that's important for our company? New customers. New customers. But when you make wise financial decisions, you're probably not going to have a negative bank account or checking account. You're probably not going to default on loans. So whether they are a member of us or they are a, a customer of a bank or another credit union, overall, they're better financially um, decision makers, right? Which in overall is going to help everybody, not just us, but it's going to help our community. And so we do not take that lightly. We are very serious about financial literacy and it's something that we're really, really proud of. So one of my favorite examples of um, improving recognition is Minute Maid. Um, back in 2009, they completely um, redesigned all of their um, packages so that it didn't matter what country you went to, it didn't matter where you went, you knew what Minute Maid looked like. Um, and so whether you were in Peru, or Argentina or Mexico if you wanted some orange juice you could go into the grocery store and as long as you knew what that package looked like you were getting minute made why do you think that's important what if they had complete what if each country had their own logo and their own des uh, design if you went to Mexico, how would you know if you were getting minute made right the brand stays in the space first with you exactly Branding also creates trust and loyalty. Um, one of the things that I love to talk about branding is um, you become the shortcut. So think about it. Um, when you want, um, let's just say you're going to the grocery store and you want to cook spaghetti. What's the, what tomato sauce do you get? And I'm not primarily asking the women because. I know if my husband were here in here, he would say whatever's on sale. Um, but the women know. What kind of what kind of tomato sauce are you gonna um, purchase? I like ragu. Ragu. Uh, like Prego. Prego. Hunt. Hunt. Um, so you know what you're getting, right? You know exactly what Prego is gonna taste like. You know exactly what ragu is gonna taste like. And so you have already created a shortcut in your mind. You know when you get to the grocery store, I know exactly which brand I'm going to get. 
Maybe you have like two or three that you, you know, and maybe you're gonna look and see which one's on sale, but you know which ones you're gonna kind of stay within, right? Um, that's why it's so important for strong brands um, to be consistent and have a clear offering with a positive brand experience. Um, so at our credit union, we don't want to just have someone come in and open a checking or savings account. We want to be top of their mind when they come in for their auto loan, their mortgage, their credit card, um, their personal loan. We want everything. Um, and so we want them, we want it to be at the top of their mind on all of those things. So when they purchase a new vehicle, we want them to say, oh, I need to go buy family savings and get my um, auto loan there. Um, this is probably my favorite um, company that I think that they have done the best at um, creating trust and loyalty and they really capture um, a customer's feelings. Um, a lot of times when you're buying, you a lot of times people do buy on feelings and so um, I saw this is an old commercial. It's one of my favorites though. And I've watched it several times so that I don't get teary eyed. She's still my baby. tell you if someone took his seat at the Thanksgiving table um, I would be uh, knocking someone out because that's his seat he's got to sit beside me <laughs> um, okay so um, so yeah branding creates trust and loyalty um, I think Publix has done an excellent job with their commercials and building that trust it's all about family um, it's where shopping is a pleasure um, you walk in and you know if you go to the Publix on Rainbow Drive or if you go to the Publix in um, somewhere in, the, in Florida, you're going to have the same experience, right? Um, why do you think people go to Publix? Because let's be real, it is a little more expensive, right? Right. They have the freshest produce. The fresh produce. Fresh produce. <laughs> you know exactly what you're getting. What did you say, Sean? I was, no, I was agreeing. They are very pricey. But, with that being said, I use Publix Pharmacy, I use Publix, I will go to Publix for specific things because I know what I'm going to get, but I also know that that I'm not going to have to walk around looking for something all day, you know, just because they move it, because they have people who are actively customer service. Their customer service is not you go to the customer service desk, it is people actively walking the aisles, looking at you, going, do you need help? Because you look lost, right? <laughs> Almost to the point where you're like, I'm good, really. Right. I mean, those poor little bag boys, they're like, let me take your groceries out. I'm like, I got it, it's just two bags. No, really, let me. And I'm like, no, really, I got my groceries. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not at that age yet. I can take my own groceries out. Um, but I do. I, I love Publix. Um, and their commercials, I look forward to them every holiday because I know they're going to be fabulous. <laughs> Um, branding also generates new customers. Um, so let's talk about um, chicken sandwiches for a moment. Um, what do you think is the fifth highest selling chicken sandwich of all time? Of all time? Mm -hmm. Oh, of. Um, yeah, right now. 
What company? Wendy's. I'd say Wendy's too. Burger King. Burger King. Yes. <laughs> Who? Which, by the way, that sandwich looks delicious. I haven't eaten at a Burger King in a while, but I just. Whoever takes their pictures is doing a great job because I just don't think it's going to look like that. Um, who do you think is the fourth best selling chicken sandwich in America? Wendy's. I'm just going to be honest. I feel like the Burger King sandwich is looking a little better than the Wendy's. Who do you think is number three? McDonald's. McDonald's, good job. Who do you think is number two? Either Jets or either um, Popeyes. 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 Which is a very interesting thing. So back in 2019, y'all remember what happened? Fights happened. Yes. Fights happened for a for a small minute. Yes. Popeyes actually became the number one chicken. Uh, number one best-selling chicken sandwich. They overthrew Chick-fil-A. Um, they actually sold out of, it, of their chicken sandwiches. You could not, I mean, you could have bought like five and resold them for $10 a piece, I'm pretty sure. Like, you could not find a Popeye's chicken sandwich anywhere. Um, so, in November of 2000, I'm sorry, in January of 2020, Popeyes was earning 33% of all consumer dollars. Um, if you were going to buy a chicken sandwich, then there was a third of a chance you were going to go to um, Popeyes. Currently, it's about 17% of the market, which um, McDonald's and Popeyes kind of swap every once in a while, but um, I think. Uh, McDonald's is like 15 or 16 percent, so Popeyes is just just barely barely beating um, McDonald's. Who do you think is number one? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A um, Chick -fil fulfills about 45 percent of all chicken sandwich orders, um, and it was one of the only six fast food chains to earn more than 10 billion billion with a B. Um, sales in 2019, and all it is is a chicken sandwich. There's nothing else they You can't get lettuce on it. Um, if you get cheese, it's extra. Um, I mean, that's all, and just honestly. And that's six days a week. And that's only six days a week. And really, I mean, that actually looks a little more, I mean, that looks really crunchy and crispy um, than the, Chick-fil-A sandwich. <laughs> um, why do you think it's the number one highest selling chicken sandwich? Flavor. Flavor? The customer, the customer, customer service. service. Customer service. Their relationship in the community. Relationship in the community? Experience, the experience that you get when you go, I think, makes it easy on the mind when you go. The consistency and the flavor of the food that you know you're going to get every time you go. And without hesitation, you know that it's going to be the same. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if you are going to Texas or New York. You know that a that a chicken Chick Fil A sandwich is going to have pickles on it. So if you don't like pickles, you better ask for them to not put pickles on it. Um, but you know exactly what you're getting. You're going to get the waffle fries. Um, and you know exactly what the Cokes are going to taste like because everything tastes the same. When you order and you say thank you, what do they say? It's my pleasure. You know exactly what, what your member experience is. May I add right there that twice they have brought me free milkshakes to my table saying, Sir, we accidentally made an, an, an extra milkshake. Would you like this milkshake? I cannot think of another restaurant that has brought me even once, much less twice, a free milkshake. <laughs> so, a few, oh, yeah, go ahead. So, the other part about Chick-fil-A's branding is that they, not, they don't just brand, they don't just brand who they are. They brand their food in the fact that it's so consistent in that they've been doing it for so long. They don't add a lot to their menu, and they don't make a lot of changes as far as taking things away. It is, it is the, it, it's just, it, this is it. 
Mm -hmm. Either you like it or you don't. And we're forcing you to like it because we're not going to change. Exactly. Which is really interesting because think about other fast food restaurants. They're constantly changing their menu items, right? I mean, Arby's, I love Arby's, but I never know what, I, I'm not really sure what they're known for. Like, I know the roast beef sandwich, but I feel like it's even kind of taken a back seat. Like, they have, they did burgers for a while. They did, they have wraps, they have sandwiches. I think they've done like flatbread pizzas before. I mean, like, Arby's just, if it's edible, they're gonna do it. Um, so they haven't found their niche, you know? Chick-fil-A is like, hey, we just do chicken. That's all we do. Like, we're gonna make it spicy. That was a big deal, because they've never done spicy sandwiches before. Um, and so, um, so yes, Chick-fil-A has just, they've really dominated um, the brand experience, the customer service experience. They are, to me, I think they're one of the leading um, companies for that. Um, branding also, it inspires employees. Um, it is very, very expensive to hire new employees. Does anyone want to take a, a guess at how much it costs a company to hire somebody? $10,000. Not quite $10,000. About $4,600. That doesn't include the training. Doesn't include training. That's just to hire somebody. That's to post the job. To hire somebody, do a drug test if your company requires that, that kind of thing. How long do you think it takes to train somebody? A new employee, how long does it take you to train? About two years to our company. So according to the Society for Human Resource Management, it takes, I'm sorry, not train. How many days does it take to fill a position? Excuse me. This was in 2019, so it, the statistics are a little off. About 42 days to, to fill a position. Probably a lot less today. Would you agree Agree, or would it be less? I mean, more. Well, you get somebody to answer you almost immediately. They'll fill out an application. They, they will accept the job, and they may not show up. If they do show up, most of them will quit in less than two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. So, you can do it immediately, but I'm not. If you're a little company, can you afford to keep rehiring somebody over and over and over again? It's very, very expensive. So, branding, it needs to inspire your employees. Um, I think probably one of the best examples is Google. Um, this is their headquarters. And, and when you apply for Google, one of their things is when they. Uh, they talk about the perks of the job. Um, they have nap pods. Y'all, I have tried to get family savings to um, <laughs> implement that. I'm still working on it, but I think that that is the most brilliant thing ever. Um, they have free meals, um, international careers. Um, they even have a tagline just for their employees. Do cool things that matter. I want to go work for Google. If my husband would let me move to um, California, I would totally go work for their marketing company. Doesn't it just look like so much fun? Look at um, look at the colors. Do you think that that was intentional? Those are their brand colors, right? That's a very specific blue. That's a very specific yellow, a very specific red. It's all throughout their company. Their average, so the average retention rate at a company is about 57%. So that means that a company will, let's say they hire 100 people, only 57 people are gonna stay. 43 people are gonna be gone. Remember, I told y'all it's about $4,600 to hire people. It's a lot of money, right? Google's retention rate is about 80%. They're the uh, number two company when it comes to retention rate. Who do you think number one is? Not Apple. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it's, it's not Chick-fil-A. I would think Chick-fil-A would be up at the top, but they probably hire a lot of like college kids, so they probably do have a lot of um, turnover. Facebook is actually number one. So, um, I 
think a lot of times companies overlook marketing. They don't think that they can afford to do marketing. Um, you know, I think when companies look at fixing their budget, usually the first thing that gets cut is marketing. Um, and, um, and it's really unfortunate because it's, I mean, obviously I would say this, it's the most important thing. Um, you know, and so I think that a lot of companies probably just, they don't think that branding is, is that big of a deal. What do y'all think? Well, it's a really a complex question because it, it's, it's um, most people are challenged to change themselves. Okay, so if you're a single person or a single person owning a business and you're not corporate, you're talking about changing yourself in order to change your company. Mm -hmm. Most people don't like doing that because you're walking around, you're the brand first. And then everyone that you hire represents a piece of you, a piece of your brand. And it's always a touchy subject. You know, I mean, for all of us, it really is. So the complexity is, why don't we do more internal marketing that matches our external marketing? Is that yeah. right? So, you know, we all walk around with this fear thing of what does somebody think? Well, they're, all, they're thinking if you own a business, or you sell something, or you provide something. So doing the internal part is part of you. So that represents when we all come here or go out. So I think the, the conversation sometimes is we, we overlook the end and just work on the outside. Is that? Yeah. So whether you're a large company or a small company today, maybe you already have branding guidelines and your company's doing pretty well on branding, or maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about today. Um, how can we create a business brand? So the first thing is to define your business's goals and values. Um, we actually are starting this um, at Family Savings. We, um, we just, we're, redoing our mission statement we'll launch that next year um but we um we looked at our core values and and we we did some tweaking to them and um, we rebranded them as family values it's our family savings um but we were so intentional that um and maybe this is just me being super ocd but when we came up with these values i wanted to make sure that the blue or the turquoise that goes with excellence, you see that on everything. If you see the word excellence, it's gonna be turquoise. If you see integrity, you know it's gonna be that icon and it's gonna be red. Um, so we are actually going to be launching this at the beginning of the year. Um, you'll see the signs in all of our branches. Um, we're gonna have, um, We'll have low, like uh, swag with these um, values on them to pass out to our members. So not only will it be something that our members um, see, but it's something that our employees are going to see and live by. So make sure that you have a good vision statement, you have a good mission statement. Mission statements should be something short and easy to remember. If you come in with a big long paragraph, that is not a mission statement. <laughs> Um, so it should be something short and sweet. Um, and then write these statements, uh, to write these statements, start with defining what your business does for the community, what your business does for your customers, um, and identify your long-term goals. That's how you can come up with your values, your mission, and your vision statement. Also, research your target audience. So our average age demographic um, is 42. And we know that most of the time, it's women who make the decisions in the household. Um, so, um, a lot of times you'll see our marketing materials um, surrounding young families, women. Um, not all the time. Of course, we, we can't forget about men. So, every once in a while, we'll have, 
you know, a, a picture of a guy on a fishing boat. But typically, um, you'll see marketing materials that are gauged towards women. Um, I love this new campaign that we're doing. Um, it's called BFF, um, Best Financial Friend. And it was really interesting because when we first launched it, I asked my husband, I was like, what do you think about it? And he was like, BFF, nobody even says that anymore. And I'm like, you're right. The new, what's the new slang that everyone calls, like, friends? What are the young people saying? Bestie, that's, yeah. Um, but we're not targeting our, he said BFF. Right, yeah. exactly. My age says BFF because that's what you said in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, and unfortunately, I'm in that 42, close to 42 age group. Um, and so when I explained it to him, and he was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. He's like, yeah, that's really clever. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good at my job. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Roger actually helped us come up with all of this. So, um, all right, make sure that you also um, analyze the competition. Um, and so uh, you better believe that we look at what the other credit unions are doing, we're looking at what the other local banks are doing, and then we're also looking at what regions and um, uh, Bank of America, what they're doing. Um, Make sure that um, you know what the customer and market thinks of them and make sure you know what they offer and what they can't or don't offer because that is your niche. That's what you need to hone in on. Um, you also need to define your position and your brand image. So these are our branding guidelines. I told you that we use a very specific blue. We use a very specific reddish orange color. Um, we even use specific um, font for our website. Um, it's called uh, Rock Salt. Um, and so that's, um, if you go to our website and you look at our heading, they're all in that Rock Salt font. Um, and so we're very intentional on what um, colors we use, what um, font we use. And then like I mentioned, our logo is very specific. We actually have two different styles of logos. We have the horizontal logo and then we have the vertical logo. Um, and that's intentional because a lot of times on social media, um, if you use a horizontal logo, it cuts off the edges. And so if you use a vertical, then it captures the whole, the whole text. Um, but again, it has the roof at the top and then it has the bar at the bottom so it still looks like a house. It's just Family Savings Credit Union that's stacked on top of each other. Um, if you don't have branding guidelines, I encourage you to come up with something. Um, come, if you use, you know, if you have specific colors that you use, find out what those Pantone co um, colors are and, and write it down somewhere. Um, and then um, you want to build an effective branding communication. So um, it's important that um, you understand your customer base um, and your member base and that you're communicating um, to them. Um, this is, I'll just, we missed the boat on this one. So I loved this campaign. We were trying to, um, it was our Youngify campaign. We were trying to lower our um, age demographic. So it was 47. We did this and it did lower about five years down to 42. Um, but we were trying to get younger members. And so we thought this is hit, this is cool, this is gonna bring in like young members to come join us. Oh, y'all, my phone blew up when these posters went out to the branches. Um, our older members hated this poster. Um, they didn't like that her belly button was showing. Um, they hated the fact that it said, this is not your father's checking account. And I was like, well, that's a common saying. That's not something that I just created. Um, so it may have been, most of our branches are in rural areas. Um, so this may have been a little too much for um, our older members. And so, because a lot of our members that come into a branch 
are over the age of 50, right? Anyone under, under 50, what do you think they're doing? Oh they're doing all their banking online. Um, so just make sure that you know your, your audience and, and what they want, what they like. Um, and then you want to design the brand's elements. Um, so you want to make sure that those elements are included in everything. Logos, color palette, and protect that brand. That is your job, to protect your brand, because that's all you have. Um, oh, God. This is a brochure <laughs> um, that was created. Um, one of our lending um, employees in Georgia created this brochure and was giving it out to people. <laughs> and he was very proud of it. Um, he, when I went into the office, um, I, I was over at his uh, branch and he was like, oh, let me show you what I created. And he handed me this brochure and I was like, oh, well this is nice. And he's like, yeah, we've been handing them out to people. And I'm like, stop, do not hand this out to anybody else. What are you doing? Um, y'all, he didn't take the proof out. Like, it says proof on there, our logo is wrong. Um, if he had messed up the NCUA or the Equal Housing Lender um, logos, we could have been fined. That's how serious it is. Um, we could have gotten in huge, huge trouble. So, just make sure that you really think everything through and that it's intentional. We um, later put out a, um, a, a email that no one is allowed to make any signs, posters, brochures, anything, nothing with our logo on it. You can request it. We'll be more than happy to um, design that for you and send it out. But um, his intentions were good, but I about had a mini stroke. Um, Y'all, it has proof. Do y'all see the watermark proof on there? I was, <laughs> oh God, I died. Um, and then the last thing is promote your brand effectively across all marketing channels. So I mean social media, email, content, paid advertising, and it should all be consistent. It should be all the same brand, all the same logo. Um, so just make sure that you are protecting your brand. Um, and um, that's really all that I have. Um, I want to open, I guess we've got a few more minutes, so if anyone has any questions or comments. 